Welcome to the first video in our series on mastering your macros. This video is going to be talking through setting a target, setting things up. Uh, so we're going to cover um, all things macros and uh, for fat loss and for strength. So we're going to go through setup. We're going to go through issues with certain calculators and formulas. We're going to go through how to choose your goal, setting your training intensity up, like volume. So you're getting a correct and more um, accurate uh, set up with your with the calories and macros. Then we're going to go over hierarchy, importance, macros for fat loss and for strength. So to calculate calories, there's multiple different ways that you can do this. Um, look, there's is so many different calculators on the uh, internet now. Um, you can times your body weight by a certain amount of numbers or whatever it is. Okay, often calculators would use an equation such as the Harris Benedict formula or there's there's loads of different ones that, that you can use we actually in our templates use a, an average of four to give you a more consistent measurement all of them would give slightly different uh, amounts um again it doesn't really matter what you kind of using at the moment there's issues with all of them um so calculating calories is based off bmr and uh, your body weight height weight age and sex and then macros can be based off of body weight um, but there's issues with this, okay? If you are, uh, say, you're an overweight person, say, yeah, over 100 kilos, then may, doing off your body weight is maybe a um, going to be an inconsistent way because you don't want to be that body weight, okay? You may want to kind of drop 10, 15 kilos. So, you know, you're basing it off of a, of a maybe a measurement that is inconsistent or something that you don't want. So, the other issue is that if you're a very light person, a very really lean person, a very small person um, who trains a lot and is very muscular, and again, you've got a low body weight, but a very kind of high metabolic rate or high requirement, then basing it off your body weight can be an inaccurate thing. So actually what we do is we base it, uh, your macros off a percentage of your calories. Okay, so instead of something like 1.6 grams per kilo per body weight or you know, for protein or five grams per kilo per body weight you know, of carbohydrates, we prefer to kind of use percentages. Now, this just allows a little bit more customization um, and uh, and allows you to be able to, to adjust things a little bit easier, okay? Just remember, there's issues with everything, um, all of these different ones, and it's just a starting point. All calorie calculators, all, you know, formulas or whatever, they give you a starting point, okay? And that's what we need to, to get in place. But we want to make that starting point as accurate as possible. So when we think about setting our calories and macros up, we obviously need to be choosing a goal. Most of us kind of come to us and we're like, yeah, I want to lose fat, gain muscle, get stronger. You know, I don't want to put on too much muscle mass and be bulky. Uh, I want to really recover quickly. I don't really want to eat too many carbs. <laughs> what we want to try and do is pick your primary goal, okay? Trying to do everything is going to just lead to failure or no progress at all. Okay, because you're kind of in that gray zone. And we're not saying that you need to be at the end of the spectrum. So we're going to talk through how to set things up at the moment. And this is why we have different targets on our, on our templates. Once you have chosen your target, I want you to commit for three weeks at least. Our templates, we work on six-week blocks, but I want you to commit for at least three weeks. Because remember, this is a starting point. I don't have all the answers. This is going to give you uh, something to, to, to get going with. After the first week, I don't want you to, to, to be changing your targets and saying, Liam, you don't know what you're talking about. This is all wrong. You know, I'm super hungry. I'm super full. I'm this and that. The first week is transition. Okay. It should be a transition for you from your current diet into what your new calorie targets are. So make that small transition and be consistent with that. It takes a couple of days for your body to, to kind of get into a nice routine. Most of the time, water weight will be adjusting, okay? So it would be if you're decreasing your carbohydrates and calories and fats and whatever, you know, then there might be a drop in water weight, okay? Because you've got less glycogen, you've got less calories, you know, whatever it is. Uh, if you're increasing your intake, there might be also, a, a, you know, an increase in water weight because we're taking more carbohydrates on. This is holding more water on the body. So, you know, you need that time for that transition. So don't really worry about what happens in the first week. You still want to track but we don't necessarily worry. The second week is probably the first true week of actually, is this calorie target? Is this what I've set actually something that, uh, you know, is going to be beneficial for me? Again, hunger signals will start to kind of normalize. You know, you'll start to kind of find that if you've got energy and training or times when you're, you feel hungry or full or whatever, 
this is the first true week. So this is what we want to start to kind of base whether this calorie target is something that uh, is accurate. And again, third week, are we happy? Are we not happy? Maybe this is where we can start to make some uh, some small adjustments, okay? Or we're consistent. We're consistent to be like, okay, I'm losing weight. I'm gaining, you know, strength and my energy is up. And this is that consistency. So this second and third week is where we kind of start to, uh, to, to really see have we got the right one. And we work on four week blocks. So it gives you that extra week to maybe think about, okay, where do I need to go? But if you're just following this for the long term, you know, you're not following one of our templates. When you set your calories up, please follow this um, to, to get you to, on the right path. Do not just jump in after the first week and be like, oh, I'm super hungry. I'm just going to increase my carbs or oh, I'm way too full. I'm trying to put on muscle. I'll drop my calories down because I can't eat that much. This is where you go into that gray zone of not really kind of doing anything. Um, so you've got to be consistent. Okay. Three week block. Now, how to choose your goal. I'm going to open the template up in a minute uh, for us just to show you how to kind of get uh, things set up. But we have um, kind of four targets for fat loss and four targets for, for strength and muscle gain. So if you have more than five kgs to, uh, to lose or you need to drop weight relatively quickly, you know, this might be uh, for a competition or maybe a you know, wedding coming up or whatever it is, okay? You need to drop weight quickly fat loss aggressive is your target okay and then this is going to put you in about a 400 450 calorie you know deficit so relatively aggressive um if you have two to five kilos to lose you know you maybe just want to kind of just lose that little bit more uh, uh body fat if you've been dieting for a while and you need to lose a bit more or if you're just starting probably this is where you need to to kind of be that moderate deficit if you want to drop fat and want to preserve as much muscle mass as possible, then gradual is your goal. Okay. Again, I'm going to talk about preserving muscle mass and protein targets uh, in a minute. But the more aggressive your diet, the more at risk you are for losing muscle mass. You have to understand that. Yes, we can, you know, uh, to, to maintain muscle mass in, in the deficit 100%, but it's not easy. <laughs> um, so a gradual dieting is, is a lot easier to to maintain your muscle mass okay so if you have a you know a little bit longer time you're not in a rush or maybe you just have like you know one kilo or you just want to lean out a little bit then gradual is the way to go because it's going to give you more food it's going to give you more energy it's give you more calories more protein to be able to to, to uh, you know to maintain this and you know it's a little bit more sustainable if you just look at the fuel training better and lean out a little bit you know just kind of almost what we would call just a a lean gain setup okay so we're not necessarily trying to maybe lose weight we are maybe trying to you know change our body composition so we just want to drop a little bit away and put on a little bit of muscle mass or maintain then uh then this is the target this is going to set you at more of a maintenance calorie target okay if we're looking to so strength we're going to muscle mass and strength if we're looking to again feel training better lean out maintain you know, lean gains. This is a maintenance, you know, uh, 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 calorie target. And this is a really good thing to, to find out, okay? If you can find out your calorie maintenance, though you don't really are on this kind of roller coaster, this makes dieting and, uh, uh, and, and training, uh, fueling your training a lot easier. Because once you know where your body is stable, then you can just make some adjustments above and below. You know, all too often I see, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, to diet, just eat less than you are now if you're not losing weight. I'm like, well, how much are you eating now? If you don't know what your calorie maintenance is, it's very easy to just say, oh, eat less or eat more. <laughs> you know, you need to find that out. Um, so lean gains, if you've hit a plateau in training or you just want to increase your strength, okay? You know, we want to get a little bit stronger, but we don't necessarily need to put on like size, um, or we find that we're just maybe not training to uh, to a higher intensity or to an intensity that we want to, muscle gain gradual puts you in that very slight surplus, okay, across the week. So this is just going to help you to just have a little bit more fuel in the tank. Um, so that's what we want to set you up. And this is going to put you in about 120, 150 calorie surplus. If you tried to gain muscle before and failed, or you are very lean, Okay, and you want to gain strength, you want to put on a little bit of lean muscle, and then muscle might gain moderate strength. Moderate is where you want to be going. Okay, 
Um, this might be when I say that, you know, have you tried the game muscle before? Maybe you have done, you've lost it, you know, so you've kind of gone through that process or you've, you know, you, you've struggled a little bit in the past. Um, this is the target to follow, to make that difference. And this is where we're starting to put on a little bit of, a little bit of mass, a little bit of size, um, not just kind of focusing on, uh, on, on getting a bit stronger and fueling our performance. Now, if this is, uh, if you're training at a very high volume, maybe kind of regular two a days, uh, or you are classed as a hard gainer, like you really struggled to put on muscle mass before or size, you know, you really haven't, you know, you think that you've tried everything and this is what you need to be following. Okay, muscle gain uh, aggressive, gonna put you in that slight kind of, um, you know, more aggressive surplus. This is really crucial, guys, that you need to marry it to the correct training stimulus. A little bit out of the scope of this video, but to lose fat, you can do anything you want, train and move and do whatever you want, but to gain muscle and gain strength, the training stimulus has got to be correct, okay? Good stuff. Now, we're getting into the importance, hierarchy of the importance of when, we've, when we go through our, our calorie targets and we get something. So maybe you've used the calorie calculator before you use one of our templates, you know, that you've got these numbers, calories, macros, protein, carbs, fats. Cool, what do I focus on? starting point is overall weekly calories nutrition is what we do on average that's the key thing so if you hit your calories you know monday tuesday thursday friday cool i'm good but wednesday i went over and then thursday or sunday i was massively under and then saturday i didn't even track i can't even remember what i did you know you might be way under way over Overall weekly intake is the most important thing. What we do on average is key, okay? So yes, you've got your daily targets, but the weekly targets is the most, uh, the most important. And calories are king, okay? This is calories are king for body composition, but they're also calories are king for training, you know, volume and intensity. You know, really need to be focusing on, on getting the calories nailed first, okay? Don't worry, get into the nuances of, of macro splits until you've got this nailed down. Then we focus on daily calories. We go and do the things that give you the most bang for your buck. So weekly calories, daily calories. Once we've got that, daily protein targets. Now the reason why we have daily protein targets, this goes for fat loss and strength, by the way. Both of them are the same. Protein is crucial for fat loss and it's crucial for, tr for, for gaining strength and muscle, okay? Potentially. It's even a little bit more important when we're in a fat loss to lose the right type of weight, but beyond the scope of this video. Daily protein targets, make sure that you are hitting those. Then we can be focusing on meal calories, okay? So we, we, you know, we uh, break down your meals, okay? Because I'm not a fan of if it's macros. Um, so I don't really like when people go to me, yeah, I, I, I know I ate whatever, and, but I hit my calories, I hit my macros. Um, but all I did was like, you know, I basically drank black coffee all day long and then I smashed a tub of Ben and Jerry ice cream and a protein shake. Not really something that I, I advocate and I like meal distribution. I like meal structure. I don't like to front load or back load calories. I like that distribution. That's what we find works best for hunger, for, for maintaining hunger levels, for helping performance and recovery and energy and training and overall sustainability. So when we focus on that, that's what we want to kind of hit. Then we talk about carbs and fats, okay? So we talk about carbs and fats, daily targets, weekly targets. You can get into those, okay? But look, carbs and fats should be aligned to your personal preference and training type, okay? That's gonna be covered in a future video. But look, you can, we've set your targets, but you can adjust these and customize these to how you kind of want. Like we're gonna give you some, some, some things to get started, but it's kind of up to you. So once we got into that, we can get into to some suggested macro splits. Okay, so look, balance is the key. Like I talked about those meal targets, you know, when we're not in, I'm not in the um, in, in the camp of that you need to be kind of super low carbohydrate, super high fat. You know, for me, I think that's just a very, very short term method for a very, very short amount, uh, small amount of people. I think balance is key and, and understanding that hierarchy, that's what makes the difference, these principles. So this is more sustainable. And look, commonly we think that more training or, you know, means a higher protein target okay or higher calorie target means more protein which actually you know this is the key thing that probably needs to be adjusted as we kind of go forward because again calories and macros sorry carbs and fats can be uh, personal preference so 
Liam, let's get into uh, some some uh, some some of the voice. Um, so why has it not come up? Here we go. Um, so macros. Here is the suggested split that we have. Okay. So fat loss. Okay. I suggest that you start at thirty percent protein, thirty five percent carbs, thirty five percent fats. Okay. People that drop carbohydrates and drop fat or whatever, like that's totally cool. Again, this is down to personal preference, but we find that this gives you around two kilos, um, two grams per kilo per body weight, just over. Um, and then look, even distribution of carbs and fats. This allows enough volume in your food, you know, from carbohydrates, and it allows you to, to have a, a nice balance to your, um, to your intake. That's our starting point. Any strength or muscle gain, we actually drop protein down because carbohydrates are higher and usually the calorie target is higher, okay? And do you remember we talked about we, we base ours off of percentages instead of uh, body weight? So this is why we just drop the percentage down because the calorie target is normally higher. Um, plus carbohydrates have a, a protein sparing effect. So we need you know, carbohydrates um, in our diets to, to, to help support our training and, and build muscle. So that means we just uh, have a little bit less requirement for protein. Uh, fats, again, just uh, are adjusted for that. And if you're vegan, again, trying to, it's still not kind of low protein, so 20 to 25%, 40, 50, you know, you can see here. So this, this is still going to give you more than adequate protein, but it's challenging. It's more challenging to get it from a, from a plant-based diet. So again, we just lower it, making sure that you're still hitting, you know, 1.2 to, to 1.6 grams per kilo per body weight. Again, we don't, we're just working off of these percentages, but making it easier and customizable for you. So a couple of nuances here, aggressive fat loss. If you are dropping into the aggressive side of things, I do want you to increase your protein target, okay? The, the, you know, the lower the target, you know, the less that protein is gonna be. We want to maintain. So the more aggressive deficit, we wanna hang on to that muscle mass as much as possible. Um, so we wanna just slightly bump that up. Okay, it's gonna seem like a lot of protein for, for um, some of you, but it's crucial to maintain. We wanna lose the right type of weight. We do not wanna be that skinny fat. We do not wanna be that, you know, that kind of loose person where you got no muscle mass and you're just kind of like, you know, you're just losing weight left, right and center, but you got no energy, you, know, you, you haven't got any strength, you don't recover very well. So protein is very you know, crucial there. And look, I do advise you to just kind of drop that off carbs. But again, totally up to you. You can drop it off fats, again, dependent on what you uh, what you want to do. Endurance or high volume training, again, you just, again, using this principle, dropping that protein, increasing your carbohydrates, because that's the requirement for you. So let me bring up the caveat, uh, the R template. This is how we would cal calculate um, calories and macros for you. So you come down, you choose your uh, your weight, height, you know, pump that in. And look, this is where your daily movement is. So we actually use daily steps now as a bit of a marker. We used to use NEAT and some other calculators would be like daily activity, you know, moderately active, I'm underactive. Like, you know, I don't really know how to, you know, that's just a kind of a word that you just kind of pluck out. Yeah, I'm moderately active. Um, but at least we're trying to, to, to put a, an objective marker on this. Now, often over, people would overestimate this, okay? So I would probably suggest that you need to choose the one that's lower than what you think you're going to be doing <laughs> because not everybody does 10,000 steps a day even though they think that they do. Um, so try to get this one as accurate as possible. If you have, you can take a weekly average of your Apple Watch or, or you know, Fitbit or whatever. And here, choose your goal. So now you've got the knowledge of which one you want to be choosing, okay? So you can choose, cool. Fat loss gradual. I'm going to go into that. Um, try to commit for that three weeks, remember, minimum, minimum. So you can choose the different goals. And then again, the training days. So this caused a few uh, issues again, because a lot of the time, other calculators would be using uh, like a physical activity level um, multiplier. So like 1.2 for like, you know, a little bit of training, 1.4 if you're doing a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. What we try to do is, again, training hours is very challenging because if it's CrossFit, like, oh, I train for like, you know, an hour, but I'm only actually doing an eight minute AMRAP. No, what do you do? Like, I don't really know, but sometimes it's like, you know, 40 minutes on the rower. It's really hard. And again, we're talking about a starting point and we're talking about averages. So I just decided to put it as training days. That'd be pretty simple. Um, so I train five days a week. If I train, five plus days a week and I do regular double sessions, 
you know, then I would choose that one. If I try and seven days a week, I'm going to choose seven days. So it hopefully makes it a little bit more simple in terms of choosing that. Uh, the target's going to get you closer to and a bit more accurate than um, just a, a, a kind of like a more subjective uh, you know, number. So what we do is we work off your BMR. And again, we, we've got the calories calculated per day. This is your total daily energy expenditure. So when we calculate all of this, we times it by you know, the amount of steps you're doing, your physical activity, we times it by training. And then we you know, use the, the goal that we set to uh, use this number and give you your calorie output. So you can see here, gradual, it's put you in a 200 calorie roughly deficit, gradual. Okay, 200 calories per day is a gradual fat loss. It's not aggressive, but it's going to make a difference. Okay, if we went to lean gains, look at that, maintenance. Okay, but it's not maintenance of your BMR, it's maintenance of what you do. So this is how we calculate your, your calories and macros. Okay, so if we go fat loss gradual, look, you can then come down and customize this. So if you remember what we said here, you can, uh, you know, this is a good starting point. 30, 35, 35. Now, if you're a little bit more active, if you're doing a little bit more training, then you might want to kind of just, you know, just change that to, uh, to, you know, a little bit more carbohydrates. It's completely up to you. Like the, the, again, don't necessarily mess around with the protein too much, but you can manipulate the carbohydrates and fats to fit your choices. Okay. Again, we've got these suggested targets. Um, remember, if you are going to aggressive, then you might want to just kind of bump that protein up a little bit more, you know, and bring those kind of carbohydrates down. A little bit there so you know this is uh this is where we uh would do that now if you can see here i know we didn't talk about grams per kilo of body weight but look it's going to give you from 70 kilos it's going to give you around kind of 2.2 2.3 if you look at the research when we're in an aggressive deficit that's probably a more sensible target to follow so good stuff like that's that's kind of kind of getting the the fat loss thing and it's exactly the same for strength you know you can choose this you know make sure that you're getting the the correct targets in so you know choosing 25 percent 45 you know 30 and then everything is populated for you okay so you know you're going through these we've got lots of videos on this you can choose weeks one to four here's your daily targets here's your overall targets it's all self-populated for you and then remember what we've got to do, weekly target, daily target, daily protein, meal targets here. So trying to get close to these, don't worry about the, the carbs and fats in those, but making sure that we're getting close, relatively close to these meal targets to give us a nice distribution. We make them the same, so it becomes very consistent, uh, a little bit easier for you rather than you know different calorie targets for every single bloody meal. So hopefully we've simplified the process, but this gives you a really nice setup, guys. So I hope that kind of gives you a bit of an overview in terms of you know how to use the template, how to kind of get set, set um, things up. And remember, we've got a four week block if you're going to follow in our, our exact uh, uh, focus. But remember to be focusing on the first three weeks, especially getting past that first week. Commit to this because you've now got a bit, hopefully, a more accurate setup. So just to kind of recap on here, like this is a starting point. OK, getting set up you know, really, really good uh, uh, starting point because hopefully now you've got a bit more of an accurate set up and choosing the right goal you know so you you're actually kind of minimizing streamlining it and making things a little bit more um, personalized remember to commit for at least three weeks at least we work on a six-week block because uh you know uh, this is how we found it's going to be super successful based on some research um, out there but you've got to got to stick for three weeks in uh, and track be aware Okay, remember you're working on averages. This is averages in terms of your calories across the week, your protein across the week, you know, your your how you're feeling in terms of your weight, your training energy, your mood, your sleep, everything. Don't take snapshots, okay, and, and be consistent. Remember that hierarchy of importance that I just mentioned there, and just look, try to make small changes to your current diet. Like, this is a big thing. Like, when you start following a new calorie target or macro target, track your current intake and look at that look at your current intake and make small changes to bring you closer to the targets that you have set so rather than thinking you need to overhaul things you know you're like okay i'm going to track my current intake in a moment actually wow I'm too bad i'm only like 400 calories away from this so you make some small adjustments and that's why we give you meal targets to be like oh my god my breakfast is meant to be 600 calories and it's only 250 you know i've only got a bit of a couple of bits of toast and on jam 
okay, well, I need to make a change because that is my key area that I need to focus on. And if you do that, that's going to you know, help you to, to bring you up to your cal- kind of daily calorie targets, maybe kind of get some protein in there, and then you'll be uh, you know, you're making kind of small changes to your diet, and it's less of a stress. Great tip to get you started when you're tracking uh, your, your intake. And remember to do that. We don't need to track everything. It can be a very stressful thing. Uh, our templates take away that stress, I think. You know, we give you targets, we give you recipes, we give you meal breakdowns that are all automatically calculated to your macros um so you don't have to do all of the calorie math you know and do anything you can simply just pick up the list you know and punch it in and then away you go you don't even have to track you can just follow the amounts you know so but you need to be aware aware of your weight aware of your clothes fit aware of non-scale victories energy levels mood sleep training energy awareness of how much you're eating if you're not tracking your food uh, you know you need to be tracking something to be making sure that you're aware so you know that if you are on the right path this is the first like i said in the series of master macros next up i'm going to be talking about adjusting targets for fat loss and adjusting targets for strength and muscle okay so you know when we've kind of been following something well what do we do after three weeks if we're feeling good if we're not feeling good what do i do after four weeks why do i ask you to increase uh you know at the uh five weeks five and six or what do i do once i finish this six week block i'm going to be talking all through that team so uh so make sure that you uh, you check this out and uh, it's going to be coming soon and uh yeah pop us any questions let us know how you're getting on and i hope you found this uh super useful